In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. Hearty welcome to the Eucharist, my dear friends, from all over the world. God bless you, and uh, God keep you safe. Fathers, families, sisters, religious sisters, uh, and I know so many sisters are there in the different convents uh, joining this Mass. We pray together to the Lord. Many friends, people also of other faiths, uh, hearty welcome. Let's pray today. Once again, for all of us, I want to pray today for all of you. Let's pray. So many of you have sent me so many, so many intentions. And I, as I mentioned to you, Saturdays, I dedicate the Mass to all those intentions. But even today, there have been several people asking on this day, this anniversary, this birthday. I pray for all of you. I offer this Mass for you. We pray. Let's unitedly pray. But you pray, pray for your own family, the ones you are in. If you are a sister in a convent for your congregation, if you are a family for your family, your individual for you and for your dear ones. Let's pray. It's good to pray, to ask the Holy Spirit to come into us. This is the week after Pentecost. Holy Spirit to come into us forcefully. Strengthen us. We need strength at this moment uh, because of the lockdown, the pandemic, and uh, the fear, uncertainty. We begin this Eucharistic sacrifice, conscious of God's presence among us, putting ourselves before Him, asking His forgiveness for our sins our faults, our weaknesses. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You sit at the right hand of the Father to plead for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sins. May He bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, whose providence never fails in its design, keep from us, we humbly beseech you, all that might harm us. Grant all that works for our good. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please sit for the readings. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Remember the good news that I carry. Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, sprung from the race of David. It is on account of this that I have my own hardships to bear, even to be changed like a criminal. But they cannot chain up God's news. So I bear it all for the sake of those who are chosen, so that in the end they may have the salvation that is in Christ Jesus and the eternal glory that comes with it. Here is a saying that you can rely on. If we have died with him, then we shall live with him. If we hold firm, then we shall reign with him. If we disown him, then he will disown us. We may be unfaithful, but he is always faithful for he cannot disown his own self. Remind them of this and tell them in the name of God there is to be no wrangling about words. All that this ever achieves is the destruction of those who are listening. Do all you can to present yourself in front of God as a man who has come through his trials, and a man who has no cause to be ashamed of his life's work, and has kept a straight course with the message of the truth.
the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our response, Lord, make me know your ways. Together, Lord, make me know your ways. Lord, make me know your ways. Lord, teach me your paths. Make me walk in your truth and teach me that you are God my Savior. Together, Lord, make me know your ways. The Lord is good and upright. He shows the path to those who stray. He guides the humble in the right path. He teaches his way to the poor. Together, Lord, make me know your ways. His ways are faithfulness and love for those who keep his covenant and will. The Lord's friendship is for those who revere him. To them, he reveals his covenant. Together, Lord, make me know your ways. We stand for the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Your words are spirit, Lord, and they are life. You have the message of eternal life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. At that time, one of the scribes came up and asked Jesus, which commandment is first of all? Jesus answered, The first is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, You are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one, that there is no other but he. And to love him with all the heart, with all the understanding, with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself, is much more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And after that, no one dared to ask him any questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear sisters, my dear brothers, families, friends, religious sisters, fathers, lay people, we once again met God in the scriptures. The scriptures are inspired by the Holy Spirit. The writers, God entered their mind and they gave their thoughts to us across the centuries. The first reading, which Father Richard read, is from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. St. Paul wrote, as I mentioned yesterday, uh, three pastoral letters. Pastoral letters were really uh, trying to consolidate the church, unlike the other letters which are meant for uh, the beginning of the church and the advancement of the church for people to begin believing in the resurrection of our Lord. And uh, two letters to Timothy. Timothy was a disciple of Paul, whom Paul took on his journey. And uh, at, when Paul wrote this, probably was in, uh, was in prison, difficult circumstances, but uh, Paul 
because of his love for Jesus, saw everything, all sufferings, as for God's glory to be accepted. And therefore, here he is in this letter, strengthening Timothy. He said, Don't worry, you've got to suffer for Jesus. You have to suffer for Jesus. Don't worry. Have, stay steadfast. That's also the cry we made. Make me know your ways, O Lord. That's what we said in the responsorial psalm, which is again responding to what uh, the letter to Timothy. And in this beautiful first reading, we have got a poem, a hymn, which probably was sung. Uh, this was, we read it in prose, but it was probably a hymn which was sung in the liturgies of the time. And he says, if we have died with him, we shall live with him. If we endure, we shall reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithful, if we are faithless, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. Let's continue a hymn to God, praising him and promising to be faithful to God. In the gospel passage, we have from St. Mark. I mentioned to you that this week we are listening to Mark. Mark was, again, uh, a disciple of Peter. He was the one who's probably, uh, he's one of the four evangelists, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And I must tell you that Mark is probably the most important in the sense that it is the first uh, of the four evangelists. Matthew, Mark must have been written around the year uh, 65 or so, 65, 66, and is the, f the first of the four. And uh, the others probably had read his and they were influenced by it, but he began. And again, it's important for us because if he was the secretary or the, he was the helper of Peter, that means that uh, he, he is reporting to us what he was not one of those who was with Jesus, but he heard from Peter, who was with Jesus right through, uh, chosen to be the leader of the apostles. For all important occasions, Peter was with uh, Jesus. And therefore, that you have this uh, sent, uh, passage over here. It continues from yesterday's. Yesterday, uh, we had these Sadducees asking Jesus about that. Remember that man who had, uh, the girl had, the lady had seven wives and uh, one died and the brother married, the next brother married and uh, whose uh, wife will she be in heaven? And Jesus tells us about heaven, that heaven is, there's no uh, getting married, heaven, there we are adoring the Lord, family relations remain, but we're adoring the Lord and Jesus sees what they wanted and immediately tell them, you do not know either the scriptures nor do you know the power of God. And then Jesus goes to show them, God says, I am the God of Abraham, of Isaac, of Jacob. And here, immediately after that, to them, Jesus was firm. Here you find Jesus is gentle. This man, the scribe, comes to him and he asks uh, Jesus, which commandment is first of all? It was a genuine question. Several times when we came to the gospel, we had Jesus knowing that they were coming there to trap him. Remember the coin, pay taxes to Caesar? All that was continuously to trap Jesus. Here's a man, a scribe, who Jesus, who sees our hearts, sees the mind, saw that this man was genuinely asking a question which he wanted to be answered, which is the greatest commandment. Being a scribe, he was an expert in the law, and therefore he knew that the Jewish law had any among amount of small, small commandments. Uh, we have that, especially in Deuteronomy, many, 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 and there were hundreds of them which had to be followed. Uh, and this is, was just to become cumbersome. He must have been a specialist, giving interpretations. You can imagine uh, the difficult time for the lawyers of the time to be able to see how the, uh, what does this law mean. But the Pharisees I mentioned to you were the ones who were careful about every letter of the law. They wanted that but not bothered much about the spirit which Jesus wanted them to. And therefore he asked, them, which is the most important? Jesus goes straight, love God, all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and love your neighbor. That is the essence of our, the Christian teaching of Jesus for our uh, behavior, for your behavior, for my behavior. Love God, he, one God over there, give him honor, Give him thanks, give him adoration, 
And show your honor, your love, your adoration to the Father by showing love to your neighbors, to all our brothers and sisters. Being a heart, have a heart which is merciful, sensitive, compassionate, which is caring, helping. Yes, today in this pandemic, that's what we need. I think this is a direct message to us today for this time. We need God's help. We need God's strength. We need to love him. We just finished Pentecost, and I keep on repeating that his presence in us. Open your, each one of you, ask your families, uh, pray that God comes into your families. I pray that God comes into my heart, comes into the, uh, over the Father's here at Archbishop's house, comes into the Archdiocese of Bombay. That we need the Spirit to strengthen us, to give us clarity of vision, to give us courage, wisdom, counsel, understanding. And we show by our compassionate heart this love of God. How do we show it in this time? There'll be so many people needing help. You are yourself needing help. You yourself are uncertain. But think always of the other person outside who's probably in more difficulty than you. Some brother, some sister is in more difficulty than you. Feel compassion for him. Have a heart of sensitivity. And when the lockdown finally begins to get eased up, think of how you could help, how we could really be people of love. You know, sisters and brothers, of the first Christians, the very first Christians, they used to say, look at these Christians, how they love one another. I wish they could say the same about us, about you and me today. We've strayed from the gospel. We've forgotten what Jesus said in today's gospel. Love God and love your neighbor. These are everything. And when Jesus uh, praised him and said, you are not far from the kingdom of God, you are entering the kingdom of God, you are close to God. May we open our hearts, our minds to the presence of the Holy Spirit, open our hearts and minds to the inspiration of the word, open our hearts and minds to love God, but to show our love by loving our brother and our sister. God bless you. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, to your goodness with this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in his divinity, who humble themselves to share in our humanity. We have this wine which we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to be pleased, receive the sacrifice which we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. God, wash away my sins, cleanse me from my my brothers and sisters that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God our Father in heaven may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church trusting in your compassion O Lord we come eagerly with our offerings to your sacred altar that through the purifying action of your grace may we cleanse by the very mysteries we serve 
Make the spread through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. To be right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For just as through your beloved Son, you created the human race, so also through him, with great goodness, you formed it anew. And so it is right that all your creatures serve you, all the redeemed praise you, with all your saints, with one heart, they bless you. Therefore, we to extol you with all the angels, as in joyful celebration we acclaim, indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, you took the chalice, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we merit to be quest eternal life, we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, to you, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
be all glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let's pray to our Father in heaven in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. The kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. It's obviously the sign of peace. Christ's peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life. Amen. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace, and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me, in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your Divine Will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment Thine. Lord Jesus, thank You for the blessings and graces You have given me through this spiritual communion. Govern by your spirit, we pray, O Lord, those you feed with the body and blood of your Son, that professing you, not just in word or in speech, but also in works and in truth, we merit to enter the kingdom of heaven. Make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Today is Thursday, right beginning the second half of the week. 
And today, uh, this evening, uh, we'll have, a, I, I asked Father Anthony Fernandez, who is a priest of our archdiocese and parish priest at Girgom, but he's the secretary of the uh, our Bishop's Conference uh, Commission for Laity. He's going to speak to us about uh, the lay apostolate. Now, each one of us, what is the role of the laity in the church? I presume you're going to speak about that. And uh, it'll be an interesting talk, sure. And after that, we'll get into the, the liturgy of the hours. So we'll have the Vespers, evening prayer, the Psalms. Psalms, you know, are inspired by the Spirit, prayers to the Father. So we'll have this talk and then the Psalms, Vespers. God bless you. Have a lovely day. Keep well. We pray now for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for a quick control of the outbreak for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We pray for the doctors doing research that an effective vaccine to combat the sickness is speedily found. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Strength in the Lord, that is self and is truth.